you. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us. I'm a Sarit Zainer, Marketing Manager for Teletimea. Today, we're presenting the Telet Wi-Fi non-cellular portfolio. Um, Wi-Fi is a versatile wireless access technology critical for um, to broader landscape and growth for IoT. It's ideal for applications that need low power and send receive high bandwidth data streams at relatively close range. I would like to introduce our presenter today, Sharath uh, Joes, Product Manager. Just for your information, we're recording this webinar and the recorded version will be available for you. And if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your control panel and we'll have time to answer your questions at the end of the webinar. Sharath, please uh, feel free to start your presentation and I hope you all enjoy our TELIC webinar. Okay, thank you, Sarit, for the introduction and the opportunity. Okay, guys, once again, welcome everyone and thank you for joining. Uh, as Sarit said, I'm Sharad Juice, Product Manager for Telet Wi-Fi Products and Solutions. So as agreed today, we will take a deep dive into uh, our offering, the Telet offering. So please feel free to um, and shoot questions. Okay, let's start here. I hope everyone is able to see my uh, see my screen. Okay, perfect. So this particular uh, slide gives a glimpse of the entire portfolio of products which Telet offers. So you can see there are products which is single band, which is BGN, which has been captured in the the lower part of the presentation. And then moving up all the way to the ABGN, which is dual band combo module, which also do have Wi-Fi plus BLE5. And then we do have the ultra, I mean, high bandwidth, I mean, transceiver module, which is 11 AC, and uh, which is again bundled with BT BLE 4.2. So the one which is in the left part of the the presentation is something which is already in the production today and the one which is in the right side is uh, is it's something which is in the engineering phase at this point in time and the e4 which is which is captured in the central row right the we866 e4p that's going to come in the quarter one of 2019 and uh, the the C3P, which is captured in the top of the presentation, that's going to come in the fag end of this year, 2018, towards December end of 2018. Now let's jump start uh, and look at the I mean the GS2000 series of Wi-Fi modules. Now, let me just start with the various modules, which is in mass protection at this point in time. So we have primarily two different uh, modules, GS2101 and GS2200. Now, each of these modules has got two variants uh, based on the antenna configuration. So one is, uh, so that, that's what has been really captured in the first two rows. So you can see GS2101MIP and GS2101MIE. Now the last letter stands for the, the antenna configuration. So you can see in the first row, you, it is represented as P, which stands for a PCB antenna. And in the second row, it's, it's, it is E, which starts with, uh, for the external antenna. So that means that the module exposes a UFL connector. Similarly, the GS2200 also do have two variants. Uh, one is an integrated ceramic antenna, which is represented by Z. So just GS2200MIZ. And the last one, which again has got an external antenna option with the, where the module exposes a UFL connector, which stands for GS2200MIE. Now, you guys might have seen uh, quite a lot of other modules, but at this point in time, these are the only four modules which has been pushed for the new designers. 
moving on to the solution architecture, all these four different modules supports both kinds of uh, architecture. One is a hosted architecture where there is an MCU which issues 80 commands and the other one is a hostless architecture where the IoT application can get executed inside the processor of the module. Now, going back to the hosted one, again, uh, both these modules, GS2200 and GS2100, 2101, uh, supports 80 commands over three different uh, serial interfaces, which is UART, SPI, and SDIO. The command remain the same for across all three different interfaces, but it do support, I mean, three different interfaces. Now, going to the hostless model, uh, both these modules support a dual core system on chip. That means that there are two processors inside and one processor is dedicated for the Wi-Fi activities and the other processor is dedicated for the IoT application. Now, obviously you will really require a compiler and uh, both these modules support an IAR compiler. We will get into the details of it in the coming slides. Again, uh, so the Tillit offers a complete off-the-shelf platform software along with the wireless LAN, I mean, which is the Wi-Fi firmware, which is again shared as a binary and quite a lot of reference applications, which will enable customers to really develop applications on their own. Uh, moving on, the next two slides captured the product specifications for both these modules, which is GS2101 and 2200. Uh, both these modules are single band uh, mod Wi-Fi module. That means that it supports 802.11 BGN Wi-Fi standards. And it's in terms of the operational modes, uh, both these modules supports access point mode, again, which can support up to 16 stations, client mode, and a concurrent mode. When I say concurrent, where the module can operate both as access point and as a station simultaneously at the same time. It also supports Wi-Fi direct and an associated mode. Again, now in terms of the throughput, as you can see, I mean, uh, it supports 20 plus Mbps in both hosted as well as the hostless architectures. The, the platform software supports both WPA2 personal and WPA2 enterprise grade securities and uh, also supports, I mean, the power saving, saving schemes like WMM and WMM power save from the IEEE standards. Now, in terms of the networking services, as I said earlier, the platform software, which comes along with these modules, is a full-blown network stack, which supports all the way from the IP layer to the application layer. We will get into the details into the next slide, but just this particular slide gives you a glimpse of the various networking services, which the module offers, and again, the platform software comes with out of the box cloud agents where the module can really connect to the device wise Tillet cloud or the Amazon AWS IoT cloud. That means that the device do come with these cloud agents inbuilt, right? The customer need not really develop these cloud agents from the scratch. Now, in terms of provisioning, now it offers a plethora of the options all the way from web-based provisioning, which can support a provisioning either from a laptop, right? That means a browser or from a native applications. When I say native applications, it could be from an Android phone or an iOS phone, right? And we do support, I mean, uh, provisioning applications. I mean, and we do offer this provisioning applications, which is free to download from the app stores from both iOS and Android. Again, it also supports other provisioning schemes like verified provisioning, group provisioning, and the Apple VAC provisioning as well. Now, in terms of the firmware upgrade, I mean, it do supports, I mean, a reliable firmware upgrade, which is, which, 
which is digitally signed okay so that means that it is highly secured over the air and over the host so either the module can go and fetch the firmware from any of the web servers it could be hosted in amazon it could be hosted in device wise cloud or any other cloud right or it could also be that the firmware could be pushed into the module from a laptop or from a native applications as well so again till it offers uh, these mobile applications which helps customers to push with the updated firmware into the module now these out of these two modules the gs2200 family of modules which is gs2200 miz and mie is the ultra low power module which can really go into these power power saving schemes like deep sleep standby and hibernate and so as you can see the hibernate is the lowest power consuming mode which can really go up to 260 nanoamperes right and as mentioned earlier both these modules supports two cpus within the module so one cpu is dedicated for the wireless lan activities which is the wi-fi activities and the second one is dedicated for the iot application the module do have an inbuilt flash memory uh, for saving the firmware and other datas and the maximum memory which has been supported in this module is four megabytes now as you can also see there is it there are quite a lot of peripherals which has been supported all the way from sdio spi uart i square c i square s gpios adcs i mean the adcs can be both it, it supports both 10 bit and 12 bit pwms and the jtag moving on to the next slide i mean uh, this this provides a glimpse of the the entire platform software so as you can see in the lower one which represents the wi-fi single band bgn capabilities it supports the station mode the access point mode the concurrent mode the wi-fi direct and the unassociated mode which is termed as a row mode here now everything else above it all the way from the ip layer to the iot application layer is completely getting executed in the iot processor of the module and as you can see it really offers a very strong complete networking services all the way from ip stack which is an ipv4 to the dhcp server client dns server client to the security features like hardware crypto engine tls which is primarily what is used for http and https and as you can see in terms of the cloud connectivity it offers mqtt the web sockets i mean co-app so it, it really offers a quite range of uh, modules software modules which can be i mean readily usable off the shelf from some of these applications which is what is represented in the top row like serial to wi-fi which accepts at commands from an mcu it could be a sensor to cloud application right where which reads sensor data and send across to the cloud or it could be a video audio application a multimedia application now we do support uh, 720p and 1080p we will look into that in the subsequent slides it could be a apple home kit i mean specification it could be a smart plug it could be roaming so it, it, it these are the various reference applications that we really offer to customers and uh, so at least it really expedite the the entire time to market right moving on to the certification all the four different modules are certified for uh, north america both uh, us and canada and uh, again it is again certified for the european union which is red and the japanese region which is uh, telec that's that's the regulatory body in japan and uh, the gs2101 mie is also certified for the korean region now coming to the wi-fi lan certification again it again supports the the bgn obviously because it's a single band wi-fi direct 
the security schemes like WPA, WPA2 Enterprise, and WPA, WPA2 Personal Security as well. Now, now let's look at into uh, look at the evaluation schemes. I mean, available for these four different modules, right? Now, as I said, I mean, here if you can look at the table, there are two rows for each module. For let me take an example of the first two rows, which is uh, for the GS two one zero one MIP. The first row, the evaluation kit part number, which is eight zero eight zero zero six one. Now, this is an evaluation kit. This is the evaluation kit that you should really order, or the customer should order, in order to evaluate the module for any generic purposes right and again you can see another part number which is 8080080 now the only difference between these two boards is that the second one which is the board number 80 right ending with 80 do have an apple authentication chip now why we need that right if you want to evaluate home kit apple mandates to have an authentication chip inbuilt into these boards now that's the reason why we do have two different boards right and one board where the vac chip is mounted and the other board where the vac chip is not mounted now apple has recently came out maybe like months ago came out with a specification where you can really avoid this vac chip now that's also supported right from the latest release which we made a couple of weeks back no, but otherwise, Apple even recommends to have this VAC chip inbuilt into any of the devices which designs Apple HomeKit. So, so that means that that's the only difference between these two boards. One board is for general purpose, and the other board is specifically needed if you want to evaluate the Apple HomeKit. So, similarly, you have two different boards for each of the module. So you can see GS2101 MIE also has got two, two evaluation boards. And similarly for the other two modules, GS2200 MIZ and GS2200 MIE. And towards the right side, you can see a, I mean, a sample picture of the evaluation boards that we really sent out. Now, uh, with respect to the evaluation, the software which will be programmed into these evaluation boards before shipping across to the customers is AT command based. So the customer can issue AT commands and or the customers is expected to issue AT commands and evaluate the module for both HomeKit amen, as well as the generic purpose evaluation as well. Moving on to the software development kit. Now, this kit is needs to be purchased only by customers who are interested in developing hostless application. That means that in, in scenarios where there is no MCU involved in the entire system, the IoT application resides and gets executed within the CPU of the module, right? Now, obviously you need a platform software and you, Hope you remember the features that we really talked about maybe a couple of slides earlier. Now, so this is the part number that you need to order in order to get the platform software. This is completely a software piece and this is being distributed through the Tillit online portal. Again, the platform software comes as a library along with the wireless and firmware, which is also shared as a library. But again, the package comes with a lot of reference applications like serial to Wi-Fi application, temperature light sensor application, I mean, Amazon AWS IoT starter kit, quite a lot of applications, right? It also provides, I mean, some of the basic fundamentals, which such as the provisioning schemes and the firmware update schemes, which is also pre-stitched together with the reference applications, what has been shared. Okay. Now, obviously, as we talked earlier, uh, you need a compiler for compiling the source code. So uh, the modules support IIR tool chain. Now, if the customers who already have an IIR tool chain, they need not really buy the compiler from us. They could, or even they could directly go to the IIR I mean, team for purchasing it. Or if you want to have a one-stop solution, one-stop shop, 
this also could be really provided from the tillage side right so you need a compiler so there are three different compilers that we offer from till it all are one year the having a validity of one year the different schemes like node log license or a mobile license or a floating license right now but as i mentioned earlier uh, this is not mandatory be mandatory to be purchased from till it you if you already have it i mean from other projects or the customer could also purchase directly from the IAR. Again, the third piece which is really required is a debugger. Again, this is completely optional. Some customer would really like to look at uh, things in detail. So for them, maybe this is mandatory, but otherwise, I mean, it's, 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 it's up to the customers whether they need to really have a debugger or not, but it is not mandatory. Again, the debugger can be purchased directly from my AR or can be purchased from Tillit as well. Moving on to the next slide, for the next at least three or four slides, we will look into the various application development kits, I mean, which is offered by Tillit. Uh, so if you remember, we looked at evaluation kits we looked at the software development kits. Now, this is a new term, application development kit. And what is this application development kit, right? Now, as I said earlier, I mean, uh, Tillet do offers reference applications, correct? Now, the, the intention behind these reference applications, some of these very specific reference applications, right? I mean, here you can see there is a smart plug reference application. What we do is that we, we provide a hardware where you can implement a smart plug or a video application or an audio application. And obviously every, every, every application needs a different hardware. And we provide the software for that as well. So in that way, the, a customer who is interested in developing a smart, smart plug application can buy this I mean, hardware rather than an evaluation board and also get access to the source code of a smart plug and jump into the market pretty quickly. So in this case, this helps customer, I mean, tremendously to reduce the time to the market, right? So here we talk about a smart plug application. So the customer is going to get an evaluation board like the one what you see in the screen right here. And that, that's the hardware board, right? And then the customer will also get access to a software which is expected to do a smart plug activities like switching on and switching off the light from anywhere in the globe or from a smartphone. Right? And the Tillet2 also offers this, uh, these native applications where uh, these evaluation kits can really switch on and switch off an LED or a light bulb from an Android and an iOS phones. Right? So, and again, as I said, I mean, uh, customer obviously need to purchase an SDK as we looked into it earlier in the previous slide in order to enhance the application software that we offer, right? Now, similarly, similar to the smart plug ADK, we also do have audio video applications. Now here we are looking at a 720p high definition video application. Uh, again, this comes with its own hardware board and a software, and the software has been distributed through the online distribution portal. And uh, this, again, this application demonstrates a video streaming in the sense like, I mean, this is something which demonstrates a uh, one-way audio, one-way video, uh, which means that the video has been transmitted to the cloud or to a mobile applications. And then there is a bi-directional video, um, bi sorry, bi-directional audio. Uh, so which primarily demonstrates a video doorbell, right? So in terms of a video doorbell, obviously you need to really see who is standing in front of your door one, and you also need to really interact with him. So you need one way video all the way from your home to your, wherever you are there in the globe, and then in order to interact with the person, you also need to have bi-directional audio capability. So this particular software comes pre-stitched with all these capabilities, what we really talked about, and a hardware, right? So this will really help customers in order to move to the production pretty quick. 
otherwise it's it's going to be a real pain for customers to really stitch together all these different technologies like video technology audio technology the wi-fi technology it's 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 going to take time all right so and we are with this application development kits till it is trying to tremendously trim down this time to market i mean by a magnitude of like six to nine months i mean typical customers based on our experience take us at least a year but with this they are going to get a jump start and they will be in the market within three to six months right it is cutting short a significant at least 50 percent of their development time Similarly, you can also see that we are coming up with a 1080p uh, high definition video plus a full duplex audio solution. And this is something which is planned for the fag end of uh, this year. Uh, we are targeting uh, the, the third week of December for the rollout. I mean, if things all go well, Again, this is very similar to the application that we have looked at the 720p, which has got as 1080p video streaming from the device to the cloud or to a mobile application. One, also, it allows you to interact bi directional audio from the device to, to your mobile applications wherever you are in the globe. Moving on for customers who really wanted to develop uh, an apple home kit enabled devices this is another development kit that we offers right and uh, which enables uh, customers to develop i mean devices like a fan or like any 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 sort of devices which needs to be controlled and monitored through apple home kit and uh, the latest specification of the Apple HomeKit as of today is R12, which is the specification number, revision number 12. And our latest platform software, which just got released last week, supports the latest specification of R12. So uh, I just want to highlight the fact that, I mean, we are pretty much up to the speed, I mean, with the Apple HomeKit, which the competitors are not. Okay. Now let's look at um, an option where uh, where the, if the module needs to be plugged into a Linux machine, right? So now all this all these previous slides we looked at options where uh, the entire networking services resides inside the module, right? Now as you know, if you want to plug into a Linux machine, obviously I mean. Uh, I mean, the entire networking services resides in the MCU, which is in the Linux. And if you want to use the module just as a transceiver, when I say transceiver, which can really transmit and receive Wi-Fi packets, that's, that solution is also possible. And you can see the, the kernel version, what has been supported, which is 4.13.3 as of today. And we are really we're looking at the app supporting Android as well in the future. Again, we this solution is also supported in both the modules, which is GS2101 and GS2200. Now, if you want to specifically evaluate this solution where the module can be plugged into a Linux machine over an SDIO, this is the evaluation board that you should be ordering. And uh, you will be able to download the platform softwares and the required documentations and the software from the link which has been here. I hope I mean, the presenter will be able to share the presentation to you I mean, shortly after the, present, after the webinar is completed. Okay, now, uh, as I said earlier, there are four different modules. And just to highlight a point here, uh, when the modules are shipped to the customers, it is then empty. That means that there is no uh, firmware down, I mean, preloaded into the module. Uh, and the customers are expected to download the firmware from the online portal and program it over the UART interface. Now, we are coming up with uh, pre-programmed modules. As a trial run, we are we are, have introduced it in GS2101 MIP and GS2101 MIE. Uh, that's those are the ones which is highlighted in the golden color, and that's that's just started. And we will be coming up with uh, more pre-programmed modules in the coming months and the quarters. Now, otherwise, the module has been shipped empty empty to the customer. 
now how is the customer expected to receive the production firmware right that's what has been really demonstrated or shown in this particular uh, slide where the customers will be able to uh, move into the the online portal they can select the features what is really required from the portal and and they will be able to download it and once downloaded the tillet offers the programming tools using which that can be downloaded into the into the module uh, i mean into the final product right now let me just quickly take you to the the portal i mean uh, i believe that makes more sense rather than most of the talking which has been done here so let me i hope everybody is able to see my screen so this is how the portal look like okay so it's pretty much an interactive portal so you can see i mean uh, you can select the module which is really interested let's select gs2200 right and you can see what are the different uh, flavors of the platform software which has been offered so let me just select the last one right the 570 and then it also asks you what kind of package do you really need right we, we looked at sdk we looked at adk and then uh, for example i mean uh, the module also do allow configuring the software when i say configuring the software it allows you to configure the various features which is in which is integrated into the binary which is offered so for example let's look at the serial to wi-fi the serial to wi-fi is the one which allows users uh i mean uh with at commands right the the mcu can issue at commands and the module responds to it <clears throat> excuse me oh, i'm sorry So first of all, you need to have a login uh, in order to access the the portal. Let me show that. This gets into the portal. You can go to the SDK builder. Under that, you can see GS22, uh, GS2000. which again comes back to the same screen where we were. So let me just quickly select. Okay. So as you can see, I mean, uh, this portal allows you to really configure the, the binary which you wanted. So you can say which interface you want, right? For the AT commands, you need a UART interface or you need an SPI interface or you need an SDIO interface, right? I mean, you can basically select the interface what you really require. So I selected a UART interface. And then if you have selected, since you have selected you what, I mean, then it allows you to configure the baud rate, the parity, the stop bits, et cetera, various, various UART configurations, right? Again, it allows you to select the various Wi-Fi capabilities. Maybe I will select why I need Wi-Fi station. I need Wi-Fi AP. So even in Wi-Fi AP, right, it allows you to configure the, the SSIDs. I mean, whatever you, you want to do, right? and the number of stations that can be supported which is from all the way from 1 to 16 right so it provides you various configurations like this correct concurrent mode concurrent mode is something that uh, if you want your module to act simultaneously uh, as a station as an access point this is something that you should select right then you have a series of networking services right i mean the dhcp server dns server quite a lot of options right apple home kit i mean there are quite a lot of options which you can see here the web sockets the mqtt's the the secured web sockets pretty much there's a quite a lot of advanced security options and everything now for example the provisioning you want to select what kind of provisioning you need right whether you need wps provisioning you need secure provisioning Similarly, let me select WPS here. 
similarly going into the firmware upgrade you can again select what are the different kinds of firmware updates you need you need a push method where the firmware update can be pushed into the module from an android phone or an ios phone or you want to go and pull it from a server which could be any of the servers right and both this push and the pull uses a secured https channel for pushing and pulling the data so again you can use whichever you way you want it again as you can see there is a digital signature option which is which makes the the firmware upgrade ultra secured and a lot of other finer details like i mean if you want to go to very advanced settings in terms of the clock in terms of the power in terms of the memory pretty much it gives a quite a lot of options right and finally when you go to the summary page i mean it gives you a list of options which you have selected correct in terms of the memory in terms of the features in terms of the host interface hope you remember that we have selected a uart interface right and also gives you a, what what is the configuration that you have made in terms of the wi-fi hope you remember that we configured the wi-fi limited ap correct the networking services provisioning services and everything once you click ok and you say build right now that this now this is the time where the request has been made to the server the server is right now trying to build the a binary based on the request that you have made and you should be able to download from the build his history <clears throat> and as you can see the one which we made right now is pending right which is the server is right now working on it and as soon as it has been done you will see a icon here saying that download that's all okay so i just want to take you through the process i mean a glimpse of the process right that that's what it was okay so the, due to the limitation of the time here let me jump into the next module which is the we866 e4 uh, module which is again a dual band combo module wi-fi uh, abgn which is supports both 2.4 gig and 5 gig and also ble5 right again uh, i'm i'm just speeding up a little bit just because of the limitation of the time here uh, so at least we will have uh, at least five plus minutes for taking the question and answers again this module is a high bandwidth dual band iot module and it also supports ble for sensor integrations provisionings and various schemes uh, this is a tri-core module one a cpu is dedicated for the iot application Another CPU is dedicated for the wireless LAN, which is for the Wi-Fi, and the third CPU is dedicated for the BLE, right? So what I want to highlight is that it has got a dedicated CPU for IoT applications, so customers can develop their own applications within the CPU inside the module. It has got very highly advanced security features, such as the secure boot. That means that, I mean, if somebody has really got physical access into the module, and if they try to really hack into the module, the module will not boot, right? If somebody has been really trying to hack the module. It has got a hardware crypto engine, flash protection, copy protection. It has got a various schemes of security features available. It is, again, low power. It comes out of the band, Wi-Fi to cloud, and supports industrial grade temperature range. In terms of the software architecture, uh, very similar to the GS2000 series of modules, which we have seen earlier, it also supports hosted and as well as the hostless model. Uh, again, hosted, we support three different interfaces for the AT commands, which is UART, SPI, and SDIO. Now, in terms of AT commands, this module supports two kinds of AT commands. One is a uh, earlier gain span kind of AT commands, which has been supported in the GS2000 series of modules, which is GS2101 and GS2200. So at least customers who want to really migrate to the latest one, they don't really need to do any software changes. One, two, it also supports a new different kind of tellet style of AT commands, right? Again, in terms of the uh, standalone hostless model, as I said, it has got three different CPUs dedicated for wireless LAN, one dedicated for BLE, and the other one dedicated for the IoT applications. Now, in terms of the compiler, it supports a GCC compiler, 
which is again free of cost and an Eclipse IDE, correct? Now, again, in terms of the platform software is obviously provided as a binary. The both the wireless LAN and the BLE uh, functionalities are also provided the libraries so the customer can develop their own application the top of it. There are quite a lot of reference applications which is provided very similar to the GS2K series of modules which is serial to Wi-Fi, sensor to cloud and and there are a lot of applications which is there in the pipeline as soon as the first release has been made ranging all the from all the way from the videos and to the Apple home kits and all the things. Okay, moving on. Uh, again, this product supports access point mode, supports station mode, concurrent mode, Wi-Fi direct, and all the other unassociated mode as well. Uh, as mentioned earlier, this is a dual band module, which means it supports Wi-Fi in both 2.4 gig and 5 gig. Uh, it can have a, it can go up to a throughput in the hostless mode up to 30 Mbps and 25 Mbps for the TCP, R, TX and RX respectively and supports personal security in the first release and will be enhanced with enterprise security in the subsequent releases. Uh, moving on, this gives a detailed descriptions of the various BLE features it supports. It supports uh, the BLE 5 and in terms of roles, it supports the peripheral, the central and the concurrent uh, mode, right? And uh, just very similar to the GS2000 platform software, it also really offers a series of um, networking services all the way from IPv4 slash v6 to the IoT um, in, uh, applications like HTTP and HTTPS. Firmware upgrade, again, it supports the firmware upgrade over the air and over the host. Uh, by over the host, what I really mean is that the customer can really uh, download applications through the serial interface as well. That's if the MCU has got access to the uh, the firmware, it can also be downloaded through the host, through the serial interfaces like UART, SPI, and SDIO. It comes out of the shelf. The platform software supports the device-wise, uh, I mean, support, Amazon, AWS, IoT support, and the future it will also be supporting the Microsoft Azure. Uh, these are the various uh, platform features that will be supported in the upcoming releases all the way from video streaming protocols like RTSP, RTP and RTCP, the, uh, the Apple HomeKit, the audio streaming protocols like Apple AirPlays, DLNAs and things like that. Now, as you can also see, this is a low power module. I mean, and offers various system peripherals like SDIO, SPI, UART, I square C, I square S, uh, ADC, PWMs, and JTAG, right? It, this uh, comes with uh, two different external antennas, one antenna dedicated for the Wi-Fi and one antenna dedicated for the BLE, so there is no uh, interferences between these two and for better performances. And in terms of the form factor, it is uh, today the 16.3 into 20.5, and again, industrial temperature range. The initially, the product will be certified for the North America region, FCC and IC, and again, uh, and it also be supported for the European Union, which is the red, all right? And obviously, it will be compliant with the Wi-Fi Alliance as well as the BTSIG. Okay, so this particular slide gives uh, a glimpse into the software uh, roadmap. And uh, as you can see, it supports uh, all the way from the ABGN, the dual band Wi-Fi, to the BLE capabilities, and all the way up to the IoT applications like serial to Wi-Fi, the sensor to cloud, the videos, and the Apple Home Kits, BLE Wi-Fi gateways, Wi-Fi roaming. So it, it, these are the various things which has been there in the software roadmap. And uh, the dark blue, which is represented uh, by 700, that's going to be the, the feature sets planned for the first release. And then you can see what are the subsequent releases, uh, release vehicles will hold, right? Moving on to the next slide. I mean, again, this slide gives the, the market segmentation and the various target applications that this particular 
uh, module is uh, best suited for. You can see there's a smart home uh, that can be used for home automation, home appliances, security systems, uh, security systems, IP cameras, smart lighting, etc. Industrial and commercial uh, vertical, again, healthcare vertical, and quite a lot of, I mean, uh, fleet management, the printers, the asset management, and everything, right? So these are the various uh, applications or the target applications that this particular uh, module is best suited for. Uh, in terms of the schedule, uh, the marketing samples and the engineering samples have been planned in the month of December. And uh, I'm sorry, the, the marketing samples has been planned in the month of November and the engineering samples has been planned in the month of December 2018 and the mass production is going to be in the Q1 2019. Okay, that's it about for the E4. Now, uh, let, let's look into the C3P, I mean, which is the last one which I'm going to cover in this uh, webinar. This is again uh, a Wi-Fi, which is a high bandwidth 11 AC dual band combo module. When I, uh, what I meant by combo is it is, it supports Wi-Fi 11 AC with BT BLE 4.2. Okay, now again, this particular product is, is a Wi-Fi companion device uh, for the LE910. A CX module uh, family of cellular modules, right? And uh, it also acts as a Linux and Android companion or a Wi Fi transceiver companion for the Linux based systems. So, just to repeat, this is a transceiver module which supports 11 AC plus BT BLE 4.2 capabilities. And it has got two use cases. The first use case it is, is the, the LT companion. That means that the module can be plugged into uh, the Tillet LE910 CX family of LT modules, one. The second use case, this can be connected directly into a Linux or an Android-based IoT systems. We will look into that and into the details in the subsequent slides. Again, the Bluetooth, uh, it supports 4.2 as well as the BLE. It do have an integrated LT Wi-Fi coexistence filter particularly when it has been really interfaced with the LE910 family of modules, pre-certified for FCC, IC, and CE, and also uh, compliant with the Wi-Fi Alliance and the BT SIG. Here, it has got only one antenna for both Wi-Fi and BT BLE, and also supports an industrial grade temperature range. Now, in terms of the solution architecture, as I said earlier, it has got two different use cases. One is the LT bundling, the other one is a Linux companion. Uh, in terms of LT bundling, as you can see, there is an MCU which is connected to LE910 series of uh, cellular modules. And uh, the LE910 CX family of module is in turn connected to the WE866C3 module over an SDIO interface which is for the Wi-Fi, and also the UART interface, which is for the BT. But the, in the first release, is doesn't support BT, but the support for the support will be restricted to the Wi-Fi. Now, coming down to the Linux and Android companion, the module can be directly plugged into the MCU, a Linux MCU or an Android MCU over SDIO and for the Wi-Fi capability, and it can be also connected in parallel to the MCU over UART or PCM, which is for the I2S, for the BT capabilities. BT, the standard, as we have seen, is BT 4.2. Okay, now, this gives an overview of the various uh, capabilities of the LT companion. As you can see, this supports uh, 802.11, ABG, and AC. And uh, it can act as a hotspot, uh, supporting up to 10 stations. And uh, the interface to the, the module is SDIO. And the supported LT modules are LE910, C4, and C1NF, which is for the North America variant. Then we have LE910, C4, slash C1EU, which is for the European Union variant. And also the LE910, C1AP, which is, stands for the Asia Pacific. Right. And in terms of the throughput, 
if it is a cat for category 4 modules it supports a download downlink of 150 mbps and uplink of 50 mbps and this is again uh, this is the max uh, speed which is for the category 4 modules and for the category 1 modules uh, the downlink is of 10 mbps and the uplink of 5 mbps okay now in terms of the form factor this is a smaller form factor of 13 cross 15 mm in terms of real estate and supports a single wi-fi and bt antenna require only a single wi-fi slash bt antenna let's look at the use case as i said earlier it supports a hotspot mode for accessing internet that means that uh, there is a cellular modem which is the le910 family uh, and connected to it is over SDIO is a WE866C3 Wi-Fi module. So the Wi-Fi module act as a hotspot. That means it acts as a state access point mode, and the stations get can, can, gets connected to it, and the the route the data has been routed to the internet through the cellular modem, which is a typical hotspot, right? That that's the use case that has been really supported supported here or demonstrated here okay so this particular slide gives a glimpse into the the evaluation board i mean so as you can see this uh, it has got an evaluation board and or it is a combination of three different boards i mean uh, one holding the w866c3 and the one holding the le910 family of uh, lt modules and then there is a motherboard right this is how the evaluation uh, board for uh, the lt bundling looks like Again, coming down to the Linux companion, uh, it supports the access point mode, supporting up to 10 stations. It supports station mode. It supports concurrent mode, Wi-Fi direct. I mean, pretty much everything, right? Also supports, I mean, the personal and enterprise security. And the highlight is that it, it supports an end-to-end -end throughput of 200 Mbps. Okay, when I say end-to-end, -end, it is all the way from the MCU, which is running on a Linux machine or an Android machine, transmitting data, over SDIO through the W866C3 to an access point or to a server, right? That's end to end, right? All the way from the host MCU to the to the server, <clears throat> it supports up to 200 plus Mbps. Okay, this particular slide gives a glimpse into the BTBLE features. I'm, I'm not going to the details of it. I mean, uh, especially because of the limitation of the time. Uh, now, this slide shows uh, the evaluation board. As you can see, this supports an SDIO card uh, evaluation board, which can be plugged into a host MCU. And the host MCU could be an NXP or it could be a Renaissance. It could be any, any generic uh, MCU, which is running Linux, right? At the same time, it can also be connected to x86. And we provide drivers for both NXP and x86. In terms of the product schedule, again, uh, uh, the product is already in the engineering sample phase. The marketing samples and the engineering samples are already out. And it is expected to hit mass production the week 50 of 2018, which is the, the third week of December for 2018. Again, this captures the target, uh, the market and the applications. As you can see, I mean, since this is a transceiver module, which has got two different use cases for the LT bundling, as well as the Linux bundling, it is best fit for a transportation and a mobility market, which is aftermarket or OEM telematics, asset tracking, fleet management, etc. It is also best suited for the commercial and uh, commercial building automation, uh, home automation, uh, printers, video surveillance, surveillance, smart city, etc. Okay, so now we have come to the last uh, slide here. Again, this captures the entire value proposition of the Tillet to Wi-Fi modules. Uh, as we have already seen, this uh, Tillet offers a complete IoT solution provider where there is a comprehensive module roadmap for single band, dual band, BLE combo, I um, mean, or 11 AC high speed, I um, mean, applications. It offers customized embedded platform software, both for hosted as well as the hostless architecture. Uh, offers cloud ready solutions, which is pre stitched together with a device wise cloud or an Amazon cloud. 
and has got very focused reference designs I and mean, I hope you remember we have gone through the smart plug the video audio applications the home kit applications the lighting or meshing and lighting applications again uh, there's an excellent support team in terms of quality the it's pretty much matured the the modules have been in the market for years at least it's been really powering six plus million uh, field deployments and as you've seen it's a global it is globally certified right it supports uh, fcc ic red uh, the japanese telec the korean kcc wi-fi lens and the bluetooth sick right so all these enables um, in a faster time to market right or a faster time to revenue i think i have pretty much overshoot the time we have i think in the last five minutes for the uh the question and answers over to you i mean i said it okay thank you sharat um we can start with a couple of questions we have um the first one is uh, which is the ultra low power wi-fi module and how low power it can really go okay so uh the ultra low power module out of these entire modules that we have discussed this is the gs2200 module and uh, it has got various power saving schemes like deep sleep standby and hibernate and uh, the uh, the lowest most power the lower most power consuming mode is the hibernate which can go up to 260 nano amperes that that's the the lower most one which is unmatched by any of our competitors which is there in the market today okay thanks the second one is uh, what are the various firmware upgrade schemes uh, supported by the um, the module okay so the firmware upgrade i mean i think i have already touched base that in the during the presentation uh, there are two ways in which uh, the the firmware upgrade can be done uh, one is uh, where the module goes and fetches the firmware from the server that's one option where which we call it as the firmware pull method right or the second option is where uh, a firmware can be uploaded into the module from a smartphone or from a I mean, browser that we call it as a push method right and both these schemes are uh, secured and we also support digital signature verification which has been really done only by the banks and other highly secure channels so these embedded uh, systems or the platform software do support it so it is one of the highly secured uh, schemes which is available in the market as of today okay and the last question is uh, what are the provisioning schemes supported by the wi-fi module okay so uh, again, there are various uh, Wi-Fi provisioning schemes available. Uh, for example, if you look at the WE866E4 module, uh, it do support provisioning over Wi-Fi as well as the BLE, right? It supports two kinds of provisioning. I mean, the provisioning can be done from a smartphone, which could be Android, which could be iOS, uh, over the IO, uh, either over a BLE channel or over a, a Wi-Fi channel. That's one option. Now, if you look at the GS2201 or 2200 or 2101 module, there is other schemes of provisioning like uh, group provisioning. That means like if you want to provision quite a lot of modules at one shot, right? Which really eases the, the, um, the provisioning scheme from an installation standpoint, that is possible. Uh, it also supports uh, Apple uh, VAC provisioning that's something which has been uh, uh, put down or the specification has been really specified by the apple that's supported and all these modules do support wps which is the ieee uh, specified provisioning scheme right so there is quite a lot of provisioning options available i mean across all these modules Okay, so I think that wraps it up. Um, thank you, Sharat, and thank you all for joining us today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to send them over to us. And uh, we hope to see you in our next webinar. Bye. Okay, thank you.